All right, so we are going to try something um, different this time with your video. Um, obviously, you can see that this is not a PowerPoint being taken um, or being captured off my computer, but this is my iPad videotaping, um, and then I'm going to load it, and we're going to see if it works. Um, and it's because your notes are fairly simple and fairly self-explanatory. Um, I didn't feel like I needed a whole big PowerPoint, so I just went ahead and decided we were going to do it this way. So this is your absolute last set of notes for the civics class. Aren't you so excited? Does it seem impossible to believe? Because it seems impossible for me to believe that we are already on our last SOL. Um, but this SOL is pretty fun, and it's just getting you guys thinking about things um, in the future and where you're headed um, after high school and just to get you kind of focusing on those kind of things. So you're setting yourself up um, at the high school with the best um, classes for what you want to be, um, for the best skills that you have, all the skills that you need um, for the path, the career path that you want to take. So this is all about personal finance and careers. Um, again, this is your last SOL. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, there are four background statements. The first one says, in awareness of personal talents, interests, and aspirations is needed to select a career. So the word aspirations means desire. And so all this sentence is really saying is that you need to know what you're good at, you need to know what you like to do, and you need to know what you desire out of life when you're going to select a career. So if you are somebody that does not like children, I would recommend that you not own a daycare. If you're somebody who does not like math and does not like numbers, like me, um, you probably don't want to become an accountant because that's all you do. Um, if you're somebody that doesn't like talking to people on the phone, if you're not comfortable talking to new people, then you don't want to work in a call center somewhere or as a secretary because you're constantly meeting new people. So all A is saying is know yourself, know what you're good at, know what you like to do and what you desire out of life and let that help you um, select your career. B says attitudes and behaviors that support, support a strong work ethic enhance career success. So if you are somebody who always gives 100%, if you're somebody who comes to school on time, you come to school even when maybe you don't want to, but you're not really sick, you're just tired, and you come to school anyway. If you're somebody who doesn't like the assignment, but you still um, work your butt off to get it done, that's a good work ethic. If you are somebody who doesn't come to school very often, or you're late to school a lot, or when you're here, you're not really working, you're just sort of working. Um, that's not a good work ethic. And the better the work ethic, the more career success you're going to have. All right. C says there is a correlation, and a correlation is simply a connection among skills, education, and incomes, meaning those who have a higher education or have more skills tend to make more money. That is not a hard and fast rule, um, but it's statistically true. And then D says, changes in technology influence the abilities, skills, and education needed in the workplace. So as technology changes, jobs change. As technology changes, jobs may go away. And you may have jobs that don't exist now that existed 30 years ago because technology has replaced that job. Um, or jobs that did not exist 30 years ago and do now because technology has created that job. 
It just depends. Um, but technology will definitely change the workplace. Okay, so focusing on you, um, which is what the next section is going to do. The first sentence says, career planning begins with self-assessment. So self-assessment just means that you are testing yourself, essentially. Do I like math? Do I like science? Do I want to work with other people? Do I want to work by myself? Do I want to work with children? Do I want a job where I travel or do I want to stay put? Do I want to make a lot of money or is money not important? Um, that's self-assessment. Answering those questions is self-assessment. Um, the other thing that you have to know about yourself when you're starting to think about careers is that employers seek employees who demonstrate the attitude and behaviors of a strong work ethic. So we talked about a work ethic up here. Um, we talked about a work ethic up here in B, and a work ethic really is just how hard are you willing to work and how important is your work to you? Are you a good employee for your boss? And if you're not, there's a good chance you won't keep your job. If you are a good employee, there's a good chance that you will keep your job. All right, the next one that you need to know about yourself is that higher skills and or education levels generally lead to higher incomes. So this is, um, again, what we were talking about up here in C. It's not always true that the people that have the most education make the most money, um, but there is a direct connection to money and education or money and skills. Um, people who tend to have more skills or more education usually... Um, make more money um, when you when you look at kind of overall um, salary rates. The last one says supply and demand can influence job income. So if you are one of only 10 people in the United States who have a specific skill and that skill is needed by a lot of different companies, they are going to throw a lot of money at you to try to get you to come and work for them. Um, so if you are somebody in high demand, you have the possibility of being able to say, hey, I would love to make more money than I am currently making in this moment. Um, and they might say yes, they might say no. You never know. Um, okay, so part three talks about technology. Um, technological advancements create new jobs. 30, 40 years ago, Companies did not have computer technicians on staff. They have computer technicians on staff now because everyone in the work, most workplaces has a computer and computers break. But 30 years ago, it wasn't necessary to have somebody on staff. Um. You need people, your IT, your technology people, to know how to fix servers and wireless internet connections when they go down. That is a skill that technology has created. That's a job that technology has created um, where it didn't, I mean, even 15 years ago wasn't as big a career choice as it is now. Um, the second one, technology allows for work across international borders. Should be an S on that. Um, there is every possibility that you could live in Virginia and work for a company in England and never set foot in England. Or live in California and work for a company in Japan and never set foot in Japan because technology allows you to do your work where you are and submit whatever it is your boss asks you to submit and you don't ever need to step foot into the actual office um, because of 
technology because of the internet and the way cell phones and, um, you know, Skype and all that stuff um, works. So this, the fact that we can um, work internationally without living internationally creates competition in the workplace because you've got now the people in Japan are not only competing for jobs with the people in Japan, but they're competing for jobs against people all over the world who have the technology to do their job from somewhere else. Um, and it gives you the chance to have competition in the job that you take because you don't just have to limit yourself to jobs around here. You could go looking for jobs elsewhere and use that as your um, as you're making your choice. Um, so definitely a lot more competition because of technology. Okay, so fiscal responsibility. Fiscal just means money. So money responsibility. How to be responsible with your money. Because with a job, once you pick the career that you want um, and you get a job, you get money. Awesome. But then with that money, you need to be what is called fiscally responsible, or you need to be responsible with your money. So the first thing that you need to do in order to be fiscally responsible is you need to make careful choices. Sorry, that word is missing. Careful choices spending money. For example, Miss Ironmonger still has not purchased her yellow Ferrari because that is not a careful choice about spending my money. That is a careless choice. Um, I should not do it. Therefore, I don't. Um, but that's a careless choice. Careful choice is buying my Toyota and being happy with it. Um, people who are fiscally responsible, people who are responsible for the, with their money, save and invest for the future. We don't live day to day. We, you should be saving once you get a job. Obviously, you should be saving and investing so that you are planning for your future. You should have insurance. If you are fiscally responsible, you should have insurance. You should keep to a budget. How much money do you have every month to spend and then stay within that budget? Um, use credit wisely. Don't allow yourself to get bogged down in thousands upon thousands of dollars of credit card debt when you're still young. Um, you want to be able to, you know, spend your money, you know, make careful choices, not just use credit to buy everything and then end up kind of bogging yourself down in debt. And then you should, if you're fiscally responsible, you should understand contracts, warranties, and guarantees that protect the individual. So we talked about this in our last unit, how when you buy certain things, contracts come into play, like with a house or a car. Um, and you should know what those contracts say. You should know what your monthly mortgage payment is. You should know what the, gut, what the bank would have to do in order to take your house or what you would have to do in order to give the bank a reason to take your house. Um, it's kind of, you know, read the fine print before you sign on the dotted line kind of thing. Okay, so you are going to go ahead and chew your notes. You have one, two, three, four, five questions um, on the side. Pause the video, chew your notes, ask any questions, um, and then hit play when you are done. Okay, so the back of your worksheet looks like this, and you are going to write a found poem 